In the last video, we looked at MO theory for 1,3-butadiene. In this video, we're going to uh, look at MO theory for a Diels-Alder reaction. And we're going to do the Diels-Alder reaction between two molecules of cyclopentadiene. And since cyclopentadiene over here looks so similar to 1,3-butadiene, right, it only has one extra carbon, we're going to use the MO theory that we developed for 1,3-butadiene to model the Diels-Alder reaction for cyclopentadiene. And specifically, we're going to look at how MO theory predicts that the endo product will be the major product. So if I look down here at my at my Diels-Alder reaction, I can see I have two molecules of cyclopentadiene. I'm just going to say the molecule on the top here represents the diene, and the molecule on the bottom represents the uh, dienophile. So there's my diene and my dienophile. I've already drawn out the reaction for you, and so we can, we can follow along what happens in the mechanism. So I know that there's going to be a bond that forms right here between carbon 1 on my diene and carbon 2 of my dienophile and carbon 4 of my diene and carbon 1 of my dienophile. So I've just kind of put in the numbers here uh, so we can kind of follow some carbons along. It doesn't have to be the, these, exact, these exact numbers. And so I know in my mechanism that my diene is relatively electron rich and my dienophile is usually relatively electron poor due to the presence of the electron withdrawing group in the dienophile. And so I can think about the mechanism as electron density flowing from the relatively rich electron uh, diene to the electron poor dienophile. So I can think about these electrons here, these pi electrons in red, as flowing from the diene to the dienophile in my mechanism. And so those are the electrons in red. And the electrons in blue here are going to move over here to the right like that to form this bond. And then finally, the electrons in magenta right here are going to form my pi bond right here on my bicyclic compound. So we have a concerted movement of six pi electrons in the mechanism for a Diels-Alder reaction. And if the diene and the dienophile approach approach each other the way I've drawn them, you're going to get these two hydrogens out here and this folded Diels-Alder product. And when the molecule unfolds, those two hydrogens are going to be up relative to this plane here. And your ring, your ring back here is going to be down. So I think about those bonds is going down and uh, and these bonds is going down. We, did, we talked about the fact that this is called the endo product. And so this is my endo product for my Diels Alder reaction and this is the one that is preferred. So we form a dicyclopentadiene so we get a dimer out of the two cyclopentadiene molecules that we started with. Let's look at the molecular orbitals for for 1,3-butadiene. And specifically, we really only care about the frontier orbitals that we discussed in the last video. So the, the HOMO and the LUMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. And so I've, I've drawn these frontier orbitals here. And I'm just going to say that the one on the left represents the diene. Okay, so these two, these two frontier orbitals over here on the left are for the diene, and these two frontier orbitals over here on the right are for the dienophile. And you'll notice they are the exact same thing, because of course uh, the diene and the dienophile happen to be the same molecule, which just simplifies our explanation here. And so we have the diene and the dienophile, and we just saw in the mechanism that the um, electron density flows from the diene to the dienophile. So we're going to think about that from a molecular orbital perspective next. And if electron density flowed from the diene to the dienophile, that would that would mean that electron density would have to flow from the from the homo of the diene, the highest occupied molecular orbital, to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the dienophile, which is, of course, the LUMO. So electron density is going to flow from the HOMO of the diene to the LUMO of the dienophile. And that is how to think about the Diels-Alder reaction from a, from a molecular orbital perspective.
And so when we, uh, once we realize that fact, we can, uh, we can draw some pictures representing the homo and the lumo of the dyne and the dienophile. So down here, uh, down here once again, let's go ahead and say that the dyne is the top molecule and the dienophile is the bottom molecule here. So we have the dyne and the dienophile. So let's go ahead and draw the phases in for our molecular orbital. So we'll start with the dyne. So if I look at the, the, uh, the homo of the dyne, uh, that would be right, that would be this one right here. And I'm going to start at carbon one. So if I start at carbon one on the homo of the dyne, then I can see that my blue phase is up. So I'm going to start at carbon one of the dyne, and I can see that the blue phase should be up. At carbon two, I can see the blue phase is also up, like that. And then at carbons three and four, I can see the blue phase is down. So I'm going to go ahead and put the blue phase down at carbons three and four. All right, so for my, for my red, I can see that uh, the red is down at carbon one, down at carbon two, and up at carbon three, and up at carbon four. So all we've done here is drawn the molecular orbital for the homo of the diene on, on my diagram here. And for my dienophile, I want to draw, I want to draw the LUMO. So I go over here to the dienophile, and this of course represents the LUMO of my dienophile, and I look at carbon one, and I can see that the blue phase is up at carbon one. So I go down here to my dienophile, to carbon one, and I see the blue phase is up, like that. Carbon two, the blue phase is down. Carbon three, the blue phase is down. And at carbon four, the blue phase is up. When I go ahead and put my, my red in, of course, at carbon one of the LUMO, it is down. Carbon two, red is up. Carbon three, red is up. And carbon four, red is down, like that. And so when my diene and my dienophile approach each other, I can think about them as being planar. So I have two planes approaching each other. And if they approach each other this way, I can see that um, I, that carbon four of my of my diene and carbon one of my dienophile have the same phase, right? So I can get some constructive overlap there of phases. And if I look here at carbon one of my diene and carbon two of my dienophile, once again, the same thing, right? So the phases are the same. The phases are symmetric. And so this is where our bonds form, right? So if I go ahead and, and color code that, so this would be where the one in red form right here, and then this would be where the one in blue form. So this is a symmetry allowed. This is symmetry allowed because the phases, the phases match up. So they can overlap. And uh, this is called, this is called uh, the primary frontier molecular orbital interaction, right? So this is, um, let me go ahead and label that. All right, so these are the molecular orbitals, the frontier molecular orbitals that have interacted, and now they've formed a bond. So I'm going to say this is this was the primary frontier molecular orbital interaction that formed two new bonds. Now, in this endo approach, uh, the reason why the endo approach is 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 favored is because of a secondary frontier molecular orbital interaction that occurs that occurs in the back here. So I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, copy these phases, right? So this would be carbon two, so this is blue, and then this is carbon three, so this is blue down here, and then this would be red up here, and red down here, and then this would be this would be red up and red down, and then this would be blue down and blue up. So all I've done is just copied exactly what I had on the left side here over on the right side so we can focus in on it a little bit better. And I can see that there's uh, phases that overlap right here. So the blue phases can overlap and the red phases can overlap as well. So I have some in additional interaction here. And so we can call this the secondary frontier molecular orbital interaction, right? So right here that we have some, we also have some frontier molecular orbital interaction. We could call that secondary. And since those phases match up, since those phases are symmetric, that gives us some extra stabilization if the two if, if if the two molecules approach each other in an endo approach all right so this is what helps favor the formation of the endo product the secondary frontier molecular orbital interaction so let's let's look at uh, let's look at the exo product 
So down here we have uh, we have the exo product, and so once again we're going to get some bonds that form this time between this carbon and this carbon like that, and so we can follow our electrons once again. So these carbon this these pi electrons, I should say, in red are going to become these electrons right here. The electrons in blue are going to become these electrons right here. And then the electrons in magenta back here are going to become these electrons. So once again, we're going to say that this top molecule represents the diene. Right, and the bottom molecule represents the dienophile, like that. And uh, we can see for this product, uh, for this product, our hydrogens are over here in the folded Diels Alder product. So when this product unfolds like that, we can see that our substituents, this ring right here, this is going up, and then this part is going down. So this is the exo product. So the exo product is not favored, although although it could form. And if we look at the molecular orbitals uh, for this approach, so how the diene and the dienophile approached uh, this time, I'm going to go ahead and label this as the diene, and then this down here as the dienophile. So you can see I've labeled those carbons, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and fill in the phases. Okay, so if you go up and check the diagram, uh, you'll see that uh, when we start when we start with uh, with carbon one on our diene, this is going to be the red phase. Carbon two, red phase is down. Carbon three and four, the red phase is up for both of those. And so blue should be the opposite phase. So we go ahead and and put that in there like that. When I look at my dienophile, right? So now carbon one is is over is over here, and uh, if you uh, if you if you check the the LUMO for the dienophile at carbon one, up is blue, and then at carbon two, down is blue. Down is blue at carbon three, and then at carbon four, up is blue. So when we put it put in the red, the red phase, we get this situation like that. And so when I when I analyze this um, this situation. I can see that I have red phases possibly overlapping at carbons one of the diene and carbon three of the dienophile, and then once again I have blue constructive overlap um, at those carbons, and so it is possible for for uh, for bonds to form there since the phases match up, and so the exo product is possible. But notice that there's no extra stabilization like we had before. There's no secondary frontier molecular orbital interaction because of how the the dienophile and the diene approached. Right? There's nothing back here, and so there's no extra stabilization, and so this is not favored. So it is symmetry allowed, but uh, it is is not the favorite product and if we go back up here to the endo product all right we can once again see that this extra secondary stabilization is what gives us the endo product so the phases have to have to have to match up for a Diels Alder reaction to occur and those are called symmetry allowed reactions